Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of my Trove News series. Now, they did show off something actually pretty new today. We haven't really seen any of this. They did hint at it earlier, I think like two weeks ago when I did the whole like Trove receiving story uh, video. But what we are talking about today is a new tutorial system. It is not coming out next patch, but it is actually live on PTS, and it is in a very early state on the PTS, so it's not finished on PTS. It's not like 100% for testing to go out onto live servers. It's just a test out to see if it works at all, like just in general at all. So definitely head to PTS if you can. I believe you only have to be level 20 to access it. I don't think they raised it to 30 when Mantle of Power came out. I could be wrong, but I haven't played PTS since before Mantle of Power came out, so I don't know. But it is not coming out next uh, patch, like I said, but it is coming out soon-ish. Again, they never give us dates because, I mean, as a developer, I can understand to never give out an actual date unless you know for sure something's going to come out. Which, they kind of don't do that either, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. That's besides the point. Again, you can see it on PTS. I'm just going to be showing the live stream footage because that's how I got this information. But this is what they were talking about when they said that Quibsley was going to talk to us. So we're not receiving any sort of quest system. Trove isn't getting any sort of lore. It's not getting any of that. It is actually a new tutorial system that Quibsley walks you through, which is still pretty cool. And they're adding its new tech to the game. There's never been speech bubbles before. There's never been like a roaming... NPC that helps you. They're also adding speech bubbles to like the NPCs as you can see on the screen Hopefully as I show off that's what they showed off today. So that's what they're adding. They're adding a new tutorial system It's got a whole new UI. It's got a bunch of new stuff. Quibs is gonna be walking you through it There's gonna be some new chat bubbles stuff like that and at some point the reason why this is so big even though it's like it's like a tutorial right? No one really cares about a tutorial The reason why this is so big is because at some point Players will be able to use these features that are all included in the tutorial. That's what they said. I could have misquoted them or something like that. But what I got, they also said they are not going to discuss any time this is coming out. <laughs> they said it could come out very soon or it could come out in an extremely long time. So they definitely don't know when this is going to come out. But they have said that this will eventually be coming out. And what I'm thinking is there's either two things that this means. Because again, they're always vague. This either means that players will be able to start making their own tutorial systems. And be able to do that through like their club. That would be pretty cool in my opinion if they do do that. But the thing that I think they are actually going to do. I do want to cover all bases. That's why I even mentioned that just in case. But what I think they're actually going to be doing is they're going to be letting players players use those features that they will be adding in this tutorial system like chat bubbles and like that animated arrow that's like hovering right there it's weird how they can add a, ho a hovering animated arrow but they can't add doors <laughs> like like working doors that's so weird but whatever i'm not a dev so i don't know how complicated an open and closed door system is but anyways that's what i think that they're going to be adding that's all i seen that was new was a animated arrow and a chat bubble system i believe that's what they're going to allow players to use in their own clubs in the future again no dates whatsoever not even a mention of a date not even a mention of like how close it's going to be they said it could come out literally now and tell forever so we don't know but that's also remember this is all that i've seen there could be more stuff on pts that i'm not seeing that they will be adding to the club system and um, they could be adding more because this is also a very early build of the new tutorial system so we'll be adding more tech more blocks more stuff that players can use so we don't know everything but i'm still excited because while I'm not really active in club building or the whole club system, because I really I like playing on my own, to be honest, unless I'm streaming, it's still pretty cool to see what other people can do. And also, I do want to open up my club a little bit more to builds and stuff like that. I do want to like kind of redo my entire club, to be honest, because my club hasn't been changed since I made it two years ago. So, I don't know. Once this system comes out, I might be redoing the club, and we can implement some of these features into our club as well. So, that would be pretty cool. So, definitely some stuff to look forward to. Uh, and also, that's that's pretty much all they uh, showed off. They did mention two more things that I want to go over that caught my attention. So the first thing is that they believe that all new tradable items... I, I don't know if all, they just mentioned that new tradable items, like the Griffin Talismans that they just added, they believe that they want them to be extremely rare because they don't want to over oversaturate the market. And the reason why I mention this is because they're mentioning that the only time they really want to add tradable items to the game is if they're going to be these extremely rare items. And I just wanted to give my opinion on that because this might catch the ears of some people <laughs> that uh, are in charge of this stuff. And I wanted to just mention that I agree to this 
like whole like mindset but kind of in moderation i don't want every new item i don't or i don't believe that every new item that is added to the game that's tradable has to be extremely rare just because you could buy a flux sure you can go out and farm flux forever there is a limit to how much you can do that depending on the player market in terms of flux per hour but you can still indefinitely farm flux so technically you can indefinitely far, uh, farm items the Griffin Talisman, sure, it's only been out for less than a week. It's still 8 million flux. That is a long time to farm that thing because you are still limited on how much you can make per hour. So, again, I agree. There should be some extremely rare items. I like the Griffin Talisman being this rare. It's up there. As a dropped item, it's rarer than Dragonite Pouches. So that means it's the rarest item in the game that you can actually find. There's rare items that you can open, but this is a different type of item this is something that you can actually find you don't have to put any flux investment or rng well there's still rng if you get it or not but you know what i mean you don't have to invest anything into it besides your own time of farming so it's just a bonus added to if you're going to be farming flux or if you're going to be farming air uh, air dust or air jams there's an added bonus that you're going to get this extremely rare item i like that i love this system but don't make every new item that rare. <laughs> like, it depends, in my opinion, on how good of the new item is. Like, Griffins, they're a new type of mount. Uh, I obviously have them all through the devs that gave them to me through codes and stuff like that. But they're a new type of mount. They have a lot of animations put into them. They put a lot of detail into these things. So I agree, these Griffins are worth that much flux. They are worth that much time to put in to get these Griffins, because they look awesome. Falminar is one of my favorite mounts in the entire game. I don't really like Paulus Bombaclaw, but everyone else seems to like them. So, you know, that, these are some of people's favorite mounts in the entire game. They're worth that much to some people. But if you add, like, a horse or something, kind of like the Radiant Steed, but, like, a new Radiant Steed, because they don't really add too many items like this. They usually just throw everything to Chaos Chest. But if they do, I don't want, like, some horse that kind of looks like a Radiant Steed or something like that, that we already have, like, a million horses. I don't want those to be that rare, if you know what I mean. So once again, I agree to this system. I like how they're finally adding stuff that's not to the Chaos Chest, because I freaking hate the Chaos Chest so bad. That it's unbelievable how many lazy, like, it's so lazy to just throw them into the chaos chest. It's unbelievable. So I like that they're stepping away from the chaos chest a little bit. But again, I was just trying to give my opinions on that. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is they did confirm one thing about what's coming in the next patch in terms of a soul sink. And what a soul sink means is... You guys have seen my crafting inventory. I have like 400 Titan Souls saved up. So that's what a Soul Sync is. Titan Souls and Lunar Souls. The things that they're going to be adding with the new expansion or new big power rank patch. Because we all know the Hydra Boss is coming. They're going to expand the Shadow Towers. We already knew all that stuff. But they mentioned the only thing so far that we're actually going to be spending our souls on is they will be including a way to upgrade your weapon with souls. So definitely save up your souls because that means higher power rank is tied to souls just like how you have to craft stellars through souls. That's most likely they're going to be adding a new tier of rarity or they're going to be making like stellar 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So definitely hold on to your souls and that was the only thing that they have confirmed. They said obviously there's going to be more things with the new boss and you know the whole expansion to Shadow Towers. Because when Metal Power came out they didn't actually expand the Shadow Tower. They just added a new difficulty and gave or they added two items to the entire soul like shadow market. So this is going to be a huge expansion to that system. I would definitely, definitely save your souls. Like I said, I have like 400. I just never had anything to spend on them because I already have like 20 maxed out stellars. So I never really had a reason to use them. Also, Titan's Treasures aren't really useful to me. I could buy like 100 with 400 souls. So they're not that useful to me. So I just always saved them. And now I'm going to, you know, have an easy time with the next patch. So I hope most people did that as well. I'm kind of lacking on Lunar Souls because Empowered Gem Boxes are so useful. So I hope that if they add something to the Lunar Soul table that is going to be more useful than in Power Gem Boxes or it's just going to be pointless. So definitely they need to make it worthwhile for Lunar Souls and then hopefully they tie some things into Titan Souls because I have a billion of them. <laughs> well, 400, but you guys know what I'm saying. I'm over-exaggerating there because I have so many. I want some things to spend them on and they're talking about Soul Sinks. So I'm glad. But that's it. That's all they showed off. That's all the things that caught my interest. I didn't go over all the questions that they answered. This is all the stuff that they had prepared to tell us today. So a lot of cool stuff. Not really any complaints. Once again, I was just giving my opinion on that whole like tradable 
like new tradable system being extremely rare i just wanted to give my opinion on that that wasn't really anything to do with like things coming to the future of the game so i hope it was not so too rambly right there but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys next time